Fire Emblem Three Houses and Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Two games featuring possibly the most iconic storylines and cast of characters the series has ever seen. But are they the best games? Or are they just as flawed as the rest of the series? I may not have all the answers, but I'm open to talking about the game and having discussions with people about it. Join us now as we talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses and Three Hopes on the newest episode of Pause and Effect. Hope you enjoy! Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the newest Pause and Effect. I'm your host, CJ, and joining me today are, are my friends, Chris and Kat. Welcome back to the show, you two. How are you both doing? Nothing doing. to report. <laughs> doing all right. All right. So it it is ironic that we are recording today of all days, uh, April 20th, 2023, because uh, today actually marks the 33-year anniversary of Fire Emblem as a franchise. You guys excited? Woot, woot. Yeah, when are they going to get to the good games? Oh, oh, knife to the heart. I would like to point out that one of the Game Boy Advance games is coming to Game Boy Advance Online eventually. <laughs> but I digress. For the 34th so, uh, anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so today's episode is dedicated to Fire Emblem Three Houses and Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, two games for the Switch that released in 2019 and 2022, respectively. Former was developed by Intelligent Systems, and the latter was developed by Koei Tecmo's Omega Force team. As you two have been on a Fire Emblem episode in the past, I believe it goes without saying how much experience you have with the series, so let's change it up. How much time have you invested into both of these games, and how many playthroughs have you done? You want to go wanna first? I don't want to I was just that. about to say! Um... I think between three hopes and three houses, I've hit a thousand hours, maybe more. Shit, really? Yeah. <laughs> I barely broke um, 200. Because I think with three houses, I've replayed the ending to three houses, all, all of the different paths, probably 15 times at this point, 12 to 15. Oh, damn. Um, and then three hopes I've beaten probably five to seven five to eight something like that so <laughs> where do you find the time uh the pandemic <laughs> yeah let's go with that <laughs> how about uh, you chris i did every route once except for silver snow because i just did not care <laughs> fair enough also edelgard did nothing wrong so why would i why would i side <laughs> against her uh <laughs> that's that's my <laughs> mantra for this episode come at me yeah no i started three houses with uh blue lions ran 80 hours into that then did uh black eagles uh crimson flower ran 80 hours into that as well because i spent a lot of time trying to grind supports and then um I am in the middle of a uh, <clears throat> golden deer run in three houses, but I stopped. But I stopped at I think the two hundred thirty hour mark because I just couldn't do it anymore. That's fair. The burnout's real. Yeah, and then three hopes. I keep trying to go back to it because I'm still on my first playthrough with a uh, golden wildfire, but um, I just can't do it. Like the gameplay is really, really good. But I personally just can't do it. That hurts, but I understand. <laughs> it's a Dynasty Warriors game. You, mm -hmm. you play you play it to a point and you just get sick of it. I mean, that that's the thing with me too, because I love Dynasty Warriors games. I sank so many hours into like, which game was it? Eight Legends on PS4, I think. And I've sunk so... I've sunk at least 400 hours into... Uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition easily. You know, it's interesting because I couldn't get into Hyrule Warriors nearly as much as I got into Fire Emblem, which, which one? might um either one of them come to think of it. I played uh Calamity, was it Calamity? Age the of Calamity, yeah. Yeah, I played Age of Calamity more than I played the original, mostly because I got really 
fed up with the uh, like the unlock path that you had to go through the, for the first game to like unlock all the other characters and things like that. I got really tired of that procedure. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think some of it kind of comes down to that Fire Emblem has the Fire Emblem characters who I know and love. And as much as the original Fire Emblem Warriors is campy as heck, um, oh my God. <laughs> I will oh. die defending that game. <laughs> I love that game to pieces. I sadly am not the biggest fan of the original Fire Emblem <gasps> Warriors myself. Okay, fair enough. It like was, it, it has, was, it was it has fun. nothing to do with the characters because the characters are fine, despite some of them being a bit of an eyebrow raiser. But <laughs> uh, you know who I'm talking about. I do. Barefoot? But um, barefoot mage. What? Barefoot mage. Lind. The only reason she was added was because one of the developers really wanted to put bare feet in the game. Oh, oh. From, uh, from she's from Marth's game, isn't she? Is that yeah. Blazing Blade or no? That's Mystery uh, Shadow of the Dragon. Emblem. Oh, oh shoot! Shadow yep, Dragon. Shadow Dragons. Yep. Okay. Well, I just lost all my Fire Emblem Street credit. <laughs> all right, don't worry. No one played any of Marth's games. I played Shadow Dragon. I played and Shadow Dragon quit. and despised it. <laughs> yep, I, played I hated Melee. that game. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, Mark's, no, I think... Mark's, Mark's best game, Melee. <laughs> Honestly, you're not wrong. But I figure, like, I think the reason I didn't like the original Fire Emblem Warriors was I think it had to do more with the pacing and how, like... <laughs> the lack like pacing. of pacing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, pacing or lack of it and, how, and just how stupidly, like, some of the events uh, came off as. That's fair. It, it's... I, I don't recommend that game for the bracing, intense emotional conflict. Yeah. I just, it's such a fun game. I think I honestly prefer Three Hopes to OG Warriors simply because it's like, it's that's fair. fair and balanced. Yeah. There's also, honestly, like, yeah. The storyline is also genuinely more solid in Three Hopes just because a lot of it is building off of Fire Emblem Three Houses, which was a really solid story to begin with. So The characters, I think, took a nosedive, though. I actually like the characterization of several of them far more in Three Hopes than I did in Three Houses. See, me me having started Golden Wildfire was a mistake, I'm realizing, because I just cannot get behind how, like, because... The Golden Deer cast had like a little bit of depth to them, kind of. And now they're all just like one note characters bumbling around like idiots. I think that's just everyone in Three Hopes, though. (laughs) They did. There were a few characters that if you go after their um, their support conversations, I felt like got more characterization in some ways than they did in Three Houses. (laughs) But like like Byleth. Well, yeah, okay, Byleth doesn't count because Byleth doesn't talk in the first game. Byleth's support conversation <laughs> with her dad was like the most characterization she got in the entirety of her own 100%. game. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking like in terms of like Raphael, for instance, I think is extremely one note in Three Ho- uh, Three Hopes. And he is to some extent in Three Houses as well, but you get more of his character in the original game than you do in the Warriors game. But I don't know. I felt like we got to see more of certain character traits of like Felix and of Sylvain. Um, I don't know. Even Ingrid. Like there were a few characters. Don't get me wrong. I love Sylvain. I love Felix. Not a huge fan of Ingrid. Um, There were characters that I just felt like got a little bit more screen time in terms of their characterization in Three Hopes than they did in Three Houses. But some of that, too, is because I think some of the focus was off of your main three characters, or four if you include Yuri. That is yeah. very fair. And I'm realizing, too, now, if I ever go back and finish Three Hopes, then, uh, like, go Azure Gleam next. No, go <laughs> Scarlet Blaze. yeah. No. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna Don't second even. start Scarlet Blaze. Okay, what? Well, why? Edelgard. Uh, that Edelgard is not a good reason. So Edelgard I... is so much fun to play as. <laughs> is See, she, I'm, actually, I, yeah. I actually just played as Shuz for pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, um, that's mostly what I've been doing. Shuz I mean, is so freaking broken. 
Yeah, Shez is absolutely the best character in the game. Um, I don't know. I mean, Edelgard, I think, gets, again, a different kind of characterization to her because it is a different story, sort of, kind of. Um, Dimitri is slightly different as well because he doesn't go completely off uh, into, like, major depressive disorder as he does in Three uh, three Houses. Um, he still definitely uh, needs therapy. I think all of them do, but... Um, and I don't say that facetiously. I seriously mean it. All of them really, really need therapy, given they, you know the, the amount of wars they've been through. The only character that doesn't is like Yuri. I think that's just because Yuri doesn't care. <laughs> Actually, I think the entirety of uh, Ash and Wolves <laughs> they don't need therapy because they don't give a shit. Yeah, you know that's fair. They Actually, they also... Constance is the only one that needs therapy. In the no, Ocean she Wolves. just needs an she just needs an umbrella or a, or a baseball hat, and she's fine. Well, that is also fair. There's something about because, like the the Ashen Wolves in particular, um, like they very clearly have been through so much. Compare even compared to some of the other groups. By the time you know, if you get the DLC and you're playing with them as three in three houses, like they've been living underground for the entire time that they've been here and barely get to see sunlight. Like that's already a cause for concern. So, you know, the rest of the crew doesn't really see violence until a little bit further in when, you know, they have their first time that they kill someone, which is still really jarring and painful. Like, um, like that Prozini clip, I'm 16 years old and killing people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, it's true. Honestly, I sometimes when I watch those kids, I'm like, oh, gosh, you all need so much therapy. This is ch- child soldiers. Like this is. And then okay. you see the Ashen Wolves who are just like, huh, get on my level. Yeah, yeah where you're like, mm, you need therapy too. You won't admit it, but you need therapy too. Everybody, just everybody should go to therapy is is the TLDR, I think. <laughs> Honestly, it works. Well, yeah, not Shamir. I let Shamir be my therapist, though. Honestly, that's fair. <laughs> not for the reasons you think. <laughs> Oh, now I want to hear the reasons. <laughs> yeah, now I do too. Uh, or wait, will will it get any of us in trouble if it's <laughs> like said in this recording? She's legal. Oh boy. <laughs> Should I leave? <laughs> oh, so she's got a little bit of A, a little bit of B, and she's got something out back. Uh, I think she's just a bad um... sniper. <laughs> Chris, please keep it in your pants. <laughs> oh goodness! I can't. I'm a I'm a I'm a Pegasus rider. I don't have the pants. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That yeah. is a that is a very good point. At some point, I would love to have a conversation about the armor choices that happen in Fire Emblem. <laughs> oh, there's some, like no. now going back the to toilet. previous characters because I'm pretty sure. Nights. Well, even I think in the very first uh, recording that I was in with CJ with Awakening, we talked about certain characters from Fates uh, who are wearing lingerie under really heavy armor. And I was like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> like, I mean, Fire Emblem's a game of supports. Once the battle is over, you immediately go to a support. <laughs> they're they're mean... speedrunning the S rank on the battlefield. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. It's just like every time I see some of these characters, I'm like, all of you should be dead. <laughs> you would be mincemeat on an actual battlefield. That's, that's what I'll give Three Hopes and, and Three Houses credit for. Their outfits aren't stupid. For the most part, I will agree with that. <laughs> now I'm trying to think of who had bad outfits. The archers. Uh, the female archers, because a lot of them were wearing skirts. Yeah. Without any kind of leg armor. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm pretty sure Bernadette was. See, I can forgive her because when is she ever going to be in battle? I mean, fair. Bernadette is going to be hiding under a table for her existence, which is totally valid. <laughs> and Unless I you're made, made her to a wyvern lord. Yeah, in which case she's still scary, but at least she's up in the air at that point and doesn't have to deal with other people. <laughs> or or you made her into a dark mage because she's got the same voice actress as Megumin. No kidding. I didn't realize yeah, that. I, I did it for the memes and it worked. 
Or alternatively, the moment if you don't recruit her in your playthrough, the moment in like the <laughs> post time skip battle oh, of Grander Field, <laughs> where like she's in that fort and Edelgard sets it on fire. Okay, so can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about how painful Three Houses is when it comes to recruiting the first yeah. playthrough? So when I played, I played Three yeah. Houses originally. I thought it was like every other Fire Emblem because I didn't spoil any of it for myself. I, I literally watched basically nothing because I was like, I want to go into this cold. And I got the time skip, got to the first fight with my, one of my favorite characters, Ash. And I'm like, oh, he's on the battlefield. Great. I'll send Byleth to go talk to him and we'll recruit him and everything will be fine. And Byleth walks up there and I'm like, where's the talk option? Uh-huh. Fire Emblem, you always give me talk option. Where is this? And then I killed him and I almost cried because I was like, what do you mean I can't recruit him? What do you mean I have to play it again to recruit everybody? What? Excuse me? That same thing happened to me. My first playthrough was uh, Scarlet Nexus. Okay. Because I don't remember what it's called anymore. Black Eagles. Oh, yeah. Crimson the only flower. recruits I did Crimson were flower. Shamir. Yeah. yeah, I only did Shamir and Leone because those were the only two characters that really like jived with me. Okay. Cut to the time skip. The first enemy I run into is Lysithia, and you could talk to Lysithia. She's the only one you could. So I was like, oh, cool. Everyone else? They're like, oh, wait, no. You're, I can kill you. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, it broke my no. heart. See, my first playthrough, I didn't really suspect anything. I just wanted to try to get every character, and I managed all but two. I missed wow. out. I missed out on Ferdinand and Lawrence. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> How'd you miss out on? Oh wait, no, it was Sylvain. Yeah, I got Sylvain was the easiest. To Sylvain, you just have to be female Byleth, and he automatically joins you. Yeah, I think actually when I played through the first time, I was playing a female Byleth, and I was like, "Wow, this is really easy to recruit people." <laughs> that was a lie. The game lied to me. <laughs> yeah, and then like male Sylvain, you need like ridiculous level of like stats and whatever else. Yeah. Which I actually, support. yeah, that yeah, I mean, that's also true. I will say I actually kind of like the way that they did it. it. As as painful as it was to you know get as far as I did into the game, only to find out that I can't recruit like ninety percent of the people who I now have to kill. Um, I actually really liked that because it felt a little bit more, for lack of a better word, realistic. Where you were like, of course, not everybody's you know beliefs are going to align. Certainly not in three houses. So, you know, them sticking with their house and then becoming an enemy is fitting, particularly for that world. But then there's the weird cases where you're playing us, you're playing Black Eagles and recruit Felix, and oh, he has yeah. unique dialogue with everybody. You're just like, what? Yeah, well, and it's kind of like Hilda, where you can't recruit her until I think it's like the chapter before the time skip. If you're in yeah, chapter twelve, the others, yeah, where it's like you can recruit her, but she's Claude's right hand woman. Why? Like she's lazy. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I don't know. I as much as it was a pain uh, to my heart, uh, as I don't know, it had a bit of a taste of. Like I said, realism, for lack of a better word. And I kind of enjoyed that. And consequences. Yeah, there you go. Consequences to your to your choices. <laughs> it's like, oh, we have to kill these people we went to school with. Good thing I was a loner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Byleth also doesn't talk. So you're like, I don't, how do you even feel? And Byleth's like stoic, staring into the sunset. And you're like, okay, fine. That's I know fine. people hate on Byleth for being so, I, but I like Byleth. Oh, so do I. I love I, Byleth. I, I self insert people like I hate self, like I self inserted into Byleth pretty dang efficiently, or not yeah. efficiently, but like mm. nicely. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, fair. I did this. The only one I don't think I did that with was Corin, uh, and that was just I'm not going to get into my beef with Fates. So, um, but like with Robin and with Byleth, it wasn't an issue for the most part. Shez was the only one because Shez like actually had a personality. I was like, you don't feel like a self insert. You still are a fun character, and of course, I'm gonna make you the main character I play. But yeah, Byla. yeah. Or it's it's also 
I name uh, I named Byleth after one of my OCs. So I was like, this is just me, but an OC. And then Chez showed up. And I'm like, well, it's using my original OC's name. So now I have to use a different OC's name. So it's like, well, I'm, I'm like, it's a second level of self-insert. So it felt weird. That's kind of a fun meta experience, though. Yeah, especially when those two OCs were like, quote unquote, siblings. So it's like, oh, yeah, Chez and Byleth are just siblings. They just don't know it. <laughs> It honestly makes their entire dynamic a lot funnier. Yeah, because then it's just like the two siblings having a, a slap fight. Yeah, and then Bala's like, stop, no. Why are you trying to fight me? I can beat you up right now. And it's like, no, I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, like, I'm the yeah. older siblings. Bala's like, no, you're not. I can hold you by the forehead and stop you from coming towards me. Stop yeah. it. You wanna. Do, do I need to take away your candy again? Is that how this is going to go down? <laughs> Reclass is in a sniper. Uh-oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean like even like arval had some interesting traits to him because i didn't have him super figured out through most of the game and i won't spoil anything well i don't know cj because you haven't gotten through that route right i haven't gotten through golden wildfire but the i remember the last character i recruited was yuri so i don't know how far that puts me you're uh far. yeah you're maybe a third Maybe a little bit more than Fuck, a third. dude. Yeah, yeah you've got a these wild. are long games. <laughs> yes. Remember how I said I've hit a certain number of hundreds of hours in these games? That's why. <laughs> yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I've hit 50 hours in uh, on that Golden Wildfire route for the first run. And I'm knowing now that I'm not even anywhere close to being done, shit. You may want to pivot. If you're not enjoying Golden uh, Wildfire, pivoting to one of the other routes might be a good idea. Um, they're all enjoyable for different reasons, but you're in it for maybe 80 to 100 hours uh, per route. Jesus, I really? I mean, it also depends on I think how... I 40. That's fair. I mean, I, I did absolutely every side thing that I could, so it took me way longer than it probably needed to, and I was doing oh, a lot no, of I did, I did that, too. Oh, all right. Well, then you're just... You're I'm, just, I did, I'm, just a, I'm just a... <laughs> I read really fast, so I just powered through everything. Ah, okay. Honestly, fair I think enough. the thing that I need to do is uh, just hyper-focus on a couple specific characters. <laughs> Only 40 hours, and I went through the entirety of uh, Scarlet Blaze. Okay. Just focus a little... on Shez. Shaz, sorry, uh, sorry, Chris. That's fine. Shaz, uh, uh, who else had a really funny character? Um, I actually liked Sylvain quite a bit in Three. Pardon me, in Three Hopes. Oh, uh, Ferdinand. Yeah, Ferdinand's interesting too. He had a really great character arc. Mm-hmm. My team currently is uh, in that game. My uh, four-man crew is uh, Shaz. Hilda, Balthus, and the last spot varies depending on what I need. Sure. Like it swaps out between like Leone, Happy, Claude, like a couple others. Yeah. No. That's legit. Mine was always uh, Shez, Byleth, Dorothea, Bernadetta. And a couple other uh, Edelgard. Edelgard was is actually really good. Mm. Like she's not a meme. Like give her the uh, one of the equipments that gives her ho- uh, flying speed in her unique class, and she is just flying as a as a tank, and it is the funniest thing. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That's pretty delightful. Oh, and Shamir. Yeah, I think I focused Shez Byleth, uh, Ash. Ignatz, Yuri, and maybe Happy. I love Happy. Happy's great. She's just, she's got it down, man. She knows how to, yeah. (laughs) Happy is best girl, and I will not argue otherwise. Incorrect. (laughs) Hubert is best girl. Now moving on. Oh, boy. Oh, my. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Dorothy is the best character, in in my opinion. Okay. Okay. But realistically, what which would you say is the better of the two games? Three houses or three hopes? Ooh. Uh best in what way? Yeah. Uh like a couple different categories. So like story, gameplay, uh sound, I guess overall progression, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. 
And I mean, you can assign different <laughs> things to like each category. Sure. Three Hopes had better progression. You think so? The story was definitely better. I think Three Houses was just a little slow, particularly at the beginning. I will um, give you that. Three Houses is yeah. very slow. Because especially if you're trying to play all four routes in Three Houses, it takes a good 15 hours or so just to get through that first, you know, couple levels, which is not a bad thing because it gives you a chance to recruit everyone and, you know, become friends with everyone and everything. But especially if you're just trying to get through the next to the next route, that can be a bit of a drag. Whereas yeah. with the other game, you're hitting the ground running from from the get go. Um, it helps they also abridge the time skip. That's true. That's very true. Um, I I think in terms of story, they're in some ways they're similar because the story is similar between the two. Uh, Three Hopes being obviously a, a different story entirely, but there are enough similarities that I kind of have a hard time saying which is better than the other. I agree though that progression is better in Three Hopes. Um, yeah. Gameplay wise, they're so different. I have a hard time again saying uh, not to stay on the middle path here, but uh, one is better than the other just because they're so different. Um, in terms of like you know, you're you've got your dynasty warriors type combat where which is very action oriented, it's very uh in the moment, whereas you know, traditional fire emblem is very um grid based and strategy based. And while there is some strategy in Three Hopes, it's definitely a lot more of, okay, I'm going to shadow step halfway across the map to go take care of that one thing that's kind of bothering my other units who are too dumb to actually do what I need them to do as AI. And then I'm going to shadow step back to where I was to finish the storyline off because I know what I'm supposed to do. With Three Houses, uh, you know, there's it's a very different type of strategy. Um, so I think both of them excel <laughs> in kind of their own way. In three hopes, you start throw shares at the problem. In three, yeah, three houses, 100%. you throw pilots at the problem. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. Honestly, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> music, Maybe. the music, though, three houses. Because three hopes is just remixes. Yeah. And yeah. I think some, three... some not necessarily for the betterment of it. Yeah. the The music in three hopes, or sorry, three houses was so good. And three hopes, it does. It's not bad, but yeah, I, oh, I, no, I no, agree. No. Yeah. I don't even have God Shattering Star. Oh yeah, they don't. That would be a uh, detracting factor. It takes away like 30 points automatically. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I think Three Houses is good up until the time skip. Well, your first playthrough, it's not but continuing continual playthroughs, I think the best part of the game is before the time skip. Really? Okay. After after you replay it, you're like, oh, I'm prepping for the time skip, and now we got to deal with all this, eh, whatever crap, because now it's just a war because it's a war. Whereas before, it's like, ooh, there's like espionage and stuff. The Death Knight, <laughs> these Reaper dudes. Where's Monica? Who's Monica? Why is Monica? <laughs> That's really interesting. I, I actually would argue it's the exact opposite. Um, but I think that's just because I was so excited to see these different characters in alternate timelines of themselves. Like when, you know, with each timeline, each of them have made different decisions and different world states affect the way that they perceive and deal with the world. Um, and that just, it fascinated me to see, you know, if I went down Golden Deer route instead of Blue Lions, um how did dimitri behave how did edelgard change how did claude change um or any of the other characters for that matter um but i can see where you have a lot more characterization going on early on with everyone whereas post time skip it's a lot more about the four main kind of yeah. characters where you have you basically have rhea uh, edelgard uh dimitri and claude and that's kind of who your focus is on for most of that three hopes i think actually did a better job with that because you do get a little bit more characterization from some of the others uh some of the other side characters yeah definitely 
Scar- yeah, Scar- Scarlet Blaze had like Ferdinand, as Ferdinand especially. Yeah, he has so much character. In oh yeah, it, we even got more of like her uh, Hubert, uh, which was you know fun, like being able to see some of the um, like Rodrigue and uh, oh shoot, who else was in uh, Gilbert. Uh, yeah, and Gilbert, like being able to see them as actual people and not just kind of random NPCs, that was fun. It was kind of cool to see these characters we had seen some of in in Three Houses kind of come a little bit more into their own. But you still need the see. That's the thing with Three Hopes. You still need to play Three Houses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you do. Three... You do still need to play it in order to understand everything. Like yeah. you can play it perfectly fine from a gameplay perspective. From a story perspective, no. Yeah, that's fair. There's it, a lot it, of nuance to the characters that gets missed if you haven't played Three Houses. Yeah, it's one of those times. So I can't think if it's if it's a good spinoff for people to get into. Mm. Well, in some ways, uh, that's why th- three or not three warriors. Goodness gracious, um, Fire Emblem Warriors, the original. In some ways, that's a better introduction to the Warriors game style or, or like bit, gameplay. Yeah. Just because, you know, if you know these characters, your heart goes pitter patter when they come into play and then, you know, they get to interact with people from other um, other games. And it doesn't matter if you're like, who's, I don't know, who's Crom? Like, I don't necessarily know who this is, but I know who Marth is. So that's cool. And I can follow along with him. <laughs> who's this Marth? Um, <laughs> why is he missing why is he missing his sleep who's this Marth? why does he have long hair <laughs> okay fair <laughs> point there's a lot of blue-haired people <laughs> why does this Marth have big boobs and wearing a wyvern <laughs> like what like why is this Marth wielding an axe <laughs> and my bow and my axe well i mean if you play heroes that's legitimately a question this crumb yeah, has Marth- like, three or four different weapons down so does Marth. Marth- Mar- yeah, they, they both have wielded an axe in a bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like... Hell, even Lucina. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's had a bow, an axe, and a spear at this point. I don't know, and a sword. And a She's tone. had the whole trifecta. The only thing she has to become is a dragon. Give it time. <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to give it time. Oh, man. I want to. I want to ask who's everyone's favorite three houses, three hopes character. Oh, and tough. and why is it the cat? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I mean, I I remember I was not completely upset, but kind of sad when you had like all of these animals running around the monastery. And like you couldn't interact with them. And even when they added that in one of the uh, season pass updates, you still couldn't pet the animals, but you could feed them. That's that's basically the same thing. It's almost the same thing. And it's like, he looks happy or like he, he looks full or there's something in its mouth. It's poison. <laughs> well, and then they kind of yep. went a little too hard in the opposite direction with uh, Engage. <laughs> Where it's like, I can view this dog from all angles. Do you want to steal this animal from its yeah. arm? <laughs> do you want to just like, adopt this poor creature that's living out in the open and had nothing to hey, do with you? You're like, hey, hey, divine dragon, the, I found hey, a camel. there's this dog spirit that's just chilling on this floating island in the sky. You can keep him if you want. Legit, though, I, I mean, just picking up being like, this rabbit is now mine. It's like, okay, do you know how to divine, take care of a rabbit? Oh, dragon. you got a deer. I know we just lost all of the rings and like things are looking bad and everyone hates us, but I found this camel. <laughs> it's got, Wait, you mean you know, we, it's got three humps. You mean you don't have a high enough bond with this country to know how to take care of a camel? What's wrong with you? Everyone knows how to take care of a camel. I didn't. <laughs> oh, I didn't. <laughs> I like, I'm good. I'm done. This mechanic doesn't make sense. I had like five rabbit. I I figured out that uh, was it the dog or the cat gave you the uh, materials to Smith. So I was like, I'm doing with those guys. Oh yeah, uh, I think it. Uh, yeah, because you could get like the rare vegetables and stuff like that with the deer and a couple others yeah. and the sheep. Yeah. 
Um, but to answer your question <laughs> more legitimately uh, about favorite characters, that's really difficult because Byleth, I think, will always have a special place in my heart because, you know, it's the self-insert. It's a character I genuinely liked um, for all that he or she or they uh, is mute. You do get more characterization than I think some people give Byleth credit for, um, just with like facial animation and the way that they kind of react to certain situations. Um, particularly the ending of the Crimson uh, Flower yeah. route, um, mm. which is oh phenomenal. Yeah, so good. <laughs> it's so good. It was um, so gay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it, it depends on which version. Yeah, you're playing. But... Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I um... see. I I play female characters so often. I sometimes forget that their male counterparts <laughs> exist. <laughs> I mean that's fair. The, it's the internet kind of shoved male Byleth out the out the window. Yeah. Well, and particularly with Edelgard. One of the most popular yeah. ships for Edelgard was found Byleth. So Yeah. Um no, good. I, uh, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that was awesome. I was so glad to see more support for LGBTQA plus uh romances. Like it was especially after the cluster that was Fates, uh, in terms oh, of those types uh, of yeah. relationships. They did a oh, yeah. much better job with three houses. I mean, getting there was still a bumpy road, let's be oh, honest. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still not fate, great. Fates, you only had like one representation yep. for like each side, and it is still easily the worst possible yep. picks they could have given us. 100%. Who were they? Uh, uh, it was Niles for uh -huh. the guys and Rajat for the girls. Yeah. Wait, was it Rajat or was it? It's Rajat. Oh, okay. Which I thought it was one of the dragons. so dumb because you have Soleil right there <laughs> she is right there <laughs> granted yeah. it wouldn't work because that was my daughter and i will always love her forever and ever that is fair <clears throat> i'm glad we are seeing the line that should be very much kept in place <laughs> <laughs> um but not then like say, then no. like the thing that made me mad with uh three houses was um i mean it was cool that they gave us more but just come right out and say it just Linhart. Oh, give me a come moment. Right out and say it. <laughs> Linhart. <laughs> give, give me a moment. Yeah, Lin, Linhart <laughs> went, starting out was like the only option for uh for like oh, male wow. Byleth because otherwise your op your options were like Alois and Gilbert and you try to do the S support with them and they're like, dude, what the fuck? You know I'm married, right? Well, also well, then, it like... wouldn't stop Gilbert. Yeah, that's fair. But it's also both of them are like two to three times Byleth's age, which is just a little weird. It's like, again, it's the whole thing of like romancing your half siblings in fates. It's like, please don't do that. <laughs> please, please don't. And no. then on and then on the women's side, you have like Dorothea, Mercedes, Edelgard. Edelgard. And then, like, easily the two stupidest Rhea. ones, Rhea and Sothis. Wait, you can romance Rhea? Yes. yes oh, there's a reason I never got to that S rank then. <laughs> yeah, it's, so also, it's also really hard to obtain. Yeah, because I know you, there's, like, a clock out at some point where, like, if you didn't rank Rhea fast enough, it just locks it out for the rest of the game. I did yeah, you can that when I was playing. You can even, only S rank it's even Rhea worse on Silver it's... Snow, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could A rank her in every single one. But you can only ask Ranker, I think, in Silver Snow. Yeah. You can't, I don't think you could support her after a certain time in uh, in uh, Black Eagles for a specific reason. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a really good reason for that. Hmm. Can't imagine why. It's beyond me. I, think. <laughs> and then I still think that's crazy, though. That she's I will say at least uh... the uh, season pass stuff gave, eventually gave us. Uh, Yuritsa and Yuri for guys. Yeah, although the the, Re the Yuritsa storyline uh is a little um they both need therapy. I will yes. put it that way. Uh that it's romance It's dark. Let's just go yeah. with it's dark. There's some things in that romance that I was like these would be actual red flags for mm -hmm. uh relationships. Um this is After not... Fire Emblem. Well, I mean, okay, we also have games where again, you can marry your half siblings in fates. You also can romance, you know, Rhea, who's arguably your child, if you're going with the whole, you know, my heart is my your mother. Like yeah. you're only you're half you're half there. Rhea is not only technically your daughter, but also your grandma. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. 
which no, which I no. think makes it so much funnier. Mm, this makes me sad. <laughs> that would be the weirdest episode of Maury ever. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Geralt's like, what? <laughs> Geralt's like, just can everybody just leave me alone and let me drink? Like, I just, I don't, I can't, I can't deal with. Or this. no, if we're I... if we're going by three hopes, can everyone just leave me alone and let me fish? Oh, that's right. I forgot he's into that. <laughs> it's because of three houses, because of the fishing mini game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah, there is no fishing me. mini game in three hopes, is there? Yep, because you're not by left. Yeah. Well, Women dead game. Me. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. <laughs> no Women fishing. Want me fish fear me. <laughs> and then you and then you have someone in another shirt that just says, wishing I was fishing. Those are my favorite fan arts of Byleth. They're pretty great. Although I'm not going to lie, again, thinking about like some of the other side characters, especially during the fishing tournament that happens in Three Houses. Uh, yeah. I want all of them to just wear that shirt because that's just delightful. They're just, they, they're so innocent and happy before everything goes straight to the nether realm. Just give me a modern yeah. AU with all of them. Yeah. I mean, there. I am a hundred percent certain there is fiction out there. That oh, there is. Want that? Yeah. <laughs> there, there is an artist on uh, Twitter. I think named a uh, Peach P E A capital C H whatever the uh, numbers associated with the account are that did um like modern A U versions of all of the uh, Three Houses girls. Oh, that's cute. Here, if I if I find it while we're recording, I'll link it to you. <laughs> But go, going back to the original question, if I had to choose a uh, like who my favorite character is, I would probably go uh, across all routes, uh, happy. Okay. And yeah, <laughs> and Constance and Balthus. Really? Okay. I love I love happy. Yeah, happy's pretty great. Happy is the greatest. Constance is. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of her. Uh, Post time skip three houses design, but her three hopes design. God damn. Oh, I forget what Happy's time skip outfits look like, but her and first ba- time skip is 11 out of 10. Balthus's outfits, I was just like, okay, yeah, sure. In three house in three houses, but in three hopes, they made him look like solid snake. And I'm like, okay, I'm into it. Done. Man, I don't remember any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like if you if you play Golden Wildfire, you get Balthus super early. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, I will admit, I don't think I paid very much attention to a lot of the costuming in this. Um, That's fair, but but I I, liked. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, but if I had to pick like route specific characters, I would go. um, Hmm. I guess. Dedu and Sylvain and Mercedes in uh, Blue Lions, like specifically on that route. Um, Dorothea for sure and Petra in um, what is it? Black Eagles and mm-hmm. Golden Deer. Hmm. Ignatz and Marianne. Easily. Okay. Text at all costs what about you chris dorothea no for Hands for down. each one dorothea <laughs> sorry my bad dorothea just across the board seriously she's my favorite character in that game bar none okay Is it, but for like reasons other than her wearing a hat <laughs> that was why i stuck to her initially was because <laughs> she wore a hat that is not a joke despite the fact that it's kind of what my gimmick has become I mean, everyone's like, this character is pretty cool. I'm like, yeah, but are they wearing a hat or a scarf? <laughs> or a scarf. That's only D and D. That that's true. Yeah, you but were the- you were known as the anime hat enthusiast for a while there for a reason, my friend. I still am, but the reason why I loved her was a because she just I, she was just really good in my first playthrough. She was just freaking nuts along with Bernadetta. And Leone. Leone's surprisingly very, very uh, ridiculous if uh, you invest in her ever so slightly. But uh, it's because she is the only character across the entire game who has a negative character arc. 
Mm. Well, I shouldn't say negative character arc, but she's the only one who post time skip gets worse. Like depressed. Everyone else is like, you know, this floor sucks, but I'm the best I've ever been. Stocks are up. I'm making seven grand on this side. I own a house now. Dorothy is like, <laughs> people are dying and shit. This sucks. I just came to the school to get laid and like retire, but now we got to fight in war. This sucks. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. You're my favorite character. Yeah. Like one, one thing that always stuck out to me in regards to Dor, in regards to Dorothea was um, if you, if you recruit her on a playthrough where you don't recruit Ferdinand and Ferdinand dies, she delivers like one of the saddest things I've ever heard. She's just like, we killed Ferdy, Professor. Like, don't you read like I wish it could have been better. Like something, something regarding like the Academy days. Like, don't you remember those days? She's the only one that does that. Like everyone else is like happy. Even Bernadetta in 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 Black Eagles, she's like has a complete 180. She leaves her room and is permanently out there. No other route has that, which is why I'm I'm I I 100 percent think that uh Black Eagles is the canon route. Because Bernadetta leaves her bedroom. I do personally think that there is a lot of discourse out there regarding um what which route is canon, and I don't think there is one. But I would be willing to put it out there that if there was a canon route, it should possibly be uh, like Azure Moon. No, it's it's Ashen Wolves. It's I guess I guess it's that too because like that does, that does imply the existence of like a golden path. Well, but I but mean, it's also can... it's also like you find out all this shit and. Byleth isn't stupid enough to be like, oh, what a weird coincidence. Like, wait a minute. I'm going to put two and two together now. Like, hang on. Guys, we shouldn't fight each other. Golden route. Yeah, I mean, they've tried to do kind of a golden route before. Not with Three Houses, but uh, Fates, where they had the, was it Revelations, I think, was the middle path. Um, yeah, and that, and which we all you know how that turned out. Right, which nope, is... No, because I never finished it. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't either. Um, but I, I didn't either. I kind of admire <laughs> uh, Three Houses for going the route it did in terms of they stuck with four separate paths. They yes, some of them, well, five if you include uh, Ash and Wolves. But I kind of appreciate that they didn't try to meld those together, and that each route did have its own consequences and its own deaths and its own, you know, uh, world literally world shattering uh, revelations and changes. Um, because they could have very easily given us a path that just all four, five, again, if you include Ash and Wolves, converge. And I, I would argue Ash and Wolves is probably one of the only routes that actually could coexist with most of the others, just because of the information you learn from there. But I agree with Chris in that uh if Violeth found out some of the information that they find out in the Ash and Wolves path. Mm, that would have made certain other paths a lot more difficult to get behind given they'd be like oh i know a lot more than i did before um why would i help the church why would i help raya uh, Raya, what the fuck why is my dead yeah. mom down here by the way that's yeah. my mom uh, i'm gonna go tell my dad brb and it draws like what the fuck <laughs> yeah. um, the, only, the only reason i said uh azure moon be like should be the canon path the only reason i say that is because um it's the only path that plays out like what a what's like been like how do i put this it's the only one that plays out like a previous fire emblem storyline where there's no like there's no mole people that are chilling underground playing dubstep in a giant cavern like actively fucking with everything like you can you go through the entirety of white clouds the prologue killing two of them obviously but then you hit azure moon they are not mentioned at all see i'm gonna just dis- you say it's like an old fire emblem that's where i disagree and say that that black eagles is because the final boss is a dragon like the fire emblem games <laughs> well, Silver Silver Snow, the final boss, is also a dragon. Therefore, also canon. It's still the Edelgard route. 
Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the blue I think... lion's route is not a is not a dragon. Does not count. But you are I mean, killing. But you are killing a demon that's reminiscent of sacred stones. Is it a demon? Well, see, it's not technically a demon. It's just Edelgard with extra steps. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. I don't know. I mean, I think there's something to be said of you know, does there have to be a canon path? Because this doesn't necessarily like we don't know there's there's names of locations in this world that are reminiscent of other games like i think there's the agma mountains there's some other references made certainly to previous games but i think each route is such its own path that i don't know if there needs to be a canon path because each one is canon in its own way unless they make a sequel to it in which case okay then there has to be some kind of official standing on it but in some ways they're just au's of each other um which i'm personally fine with uh but where's, where's my coffee shop au okay if they make a fire emblem coffee shop game i don't think they realize how much money they would make off of that game i mean they kind of it, do it's called fire emblem heroes okay they, fair seem enough. Coffee mini, they seem to add a coffee mini game yeah okay fair enough or like a team Honestly, mini that game is and they're done add the team mini game in somehow Oh, oh my god, add so the T-mini game in. Oh, All that those would be characters. so cute. I would Perfect. do that. I would play the I would play the hack Intelligent out systems, my going Get rates on this. Are, are 35 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I do work remote. Yeah, in intelligent systems. Make make an international office in the States and hire us, please. Yeah, we'll get behind this. I played every single one of your games except the, the bad ones, which are none of them. See, I gotcha. <laughs> Roy who? <laughs> Roy. Exactly. Roy gets such a bad end of the stick. It's not fair. Yeah. He's, hey, he's the best character in uh, Ultimate, though. <laughs> fair enough. That counts for... Yeah, see, Marth was the best in, in, in Melee. <laughs> was also really good in uh, Smash 4. Mm -hmm. And then Ultimate has Lucina and Grom for a little bit and Roy. And Violet. Basically, it's the kids. The kids are really good in that game. <laughs> and Corrin. Corrin was really good. Yeah. Mike's also good depending on how you choose to approach it. He's way too fundamental. Not fundamental, but like he's way too open book. You know exactly what his game plan is. He's going to nair. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> so my or next question is... Um, do you think that the two Fodland games are the best games in the entire Fire Emblem series? Uh, why do you feel that way or why do you not feel that way if you don't think they are? And what do you think is the better one? I would have said yes uh, six months ago. For, no. I would, have said, I would have said yes in January. Not anymore. So you think Engage is better? Engage's gameplay is so much better than Three Ho Three Houses. You know, I agree. Purely, purely from the Fire Emblem part, the uh, the Somniel not as good as as uh, Garrick Mock. I mean, the Somniel is basically just uh, your base in the Deep Realms and Fates, but worse. <laughs> I, I don't. Know. I don't know about that. I, it's been like ten years since I've even touched fates that i can't really tell you i don't know about that and the only reason i say that is because you in the somniel you can at least uh grind supports between other characters that aren't you now uh, you could do that in the in deep realms too it's been a long you, time you just had to fight other people that was how i grinded supports in conquest i would uh, do versus matches and use specific people because you don't gain levels, but you gain support. I ah. think I, I'm pretty sure I wiped Fates' existence from my memory. I can't. In terms of gameplay. <laughs> there are two characters from that game that will never leave my memories. For good or for bad? Scarlet, my beloved. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, your kid. No, Kana right. and Sole are like my two of my most favorite Fire Emblem characters of all time. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Um, so, like, Sully is my de facto favorite Fire Emblem character. Okay, fair enough. Sec- That's fair. Second is Pent. Second is Pent. Oh gosh, there's a character name I haven't heard in a while. Oh, <laughs> I'd be um, okay for Pent. <laughs> he's married um, though, so. Yeah, that. I mean, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to him. Polyamory is a thing if they're both okay with it. I let him adopt me though. Mm, I'm getting mixed signals here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't care what it'll take, pet. Just let me into your family okay, somehow. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> this, is, this is pacing a little desperate, but okay. Fair enough. I'll make sure Cl- Clarice actually has good growths in six. I swear. <laughs> Wait, that came out wrong. Um. Okay. <laughs> Yo, um, anyway. Jesus Christ! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to go to go back to your original question, CJ, um, I it's it's hard. It's a very, very, very good game, and I think especially after the lackluster fates, um, Echoes was kind of a nice return to form, uh, and it was, but obviously it was a port or a slight remake of a port. Um, oh, it was a full one hundred percent remake. Was it a full remake? Okay, yeah, yeah. completely. Uh, Okay, that's right, because they did that better than they did Shadow Dragon, uh, which yes. we don't talk about. Um, I'm still but, mad that we didn't get uh, the remake of 3, which became like Fire Emblem 12, Heroes of Light and Shadow. We may still, though. I mean, nothing says that, you know, Intelligent Systems won't go back and remake another game. So we'll find out. to not remake Genealogy. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with certain games being left in the shadows no pun intended um but i i still think and maybe it's the nostalgia speaking as opposed to it actually being a better game but awakening to this day is still my favorite of all of the fire emblem games um and i think some of it has to do with how effective the quote-unquote choice feels in that game um, there's not many places where you can actually make choices in uh, in that Fire Emblem game, but the few places where you can, it's absolutely critical to the theoretical continuation of that world. Um, and like the amount of feeling that comes behind those decisions still gets me to this day. Three Houses is fantastic, but I think I still would say Awakening. I, I don't know if I would say Awakening is a better game in terms, certainly not in terms of gameplay. I think Three Houses has actually got some more solid gameplay, but there were certain things in Awakening, things like uh, being able to pair up units, um, which makes sense, especially if you have like, you know, a unit on horseback. Um, I missed that mechanic among some of just the camaraderie and characterization that's in Awakening that just, I don't know. I it's one of those games that just is so special to me that doing that comparison is tricky in terms of modern fire emblem games. I think three houses is the most solid story wise. Um, I think I understand what you're saying, Chris, when you're like the gameplay is better in uh, engaged uh, in you too, CJ. Um, but I, I don't know. Engaged. I, I actually really enjoyed Engage outside of the DLC. Uh, so, I don't know. I, Fire Emblem's good, man. Like, it's just good. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't definitively say which one's better. Because both are good. It's just... Fire Emblem Three Houses was easy. Even on hard mm-hmm. mode, it was too easy. Whereas Engage, quite difficult. It spiked really hard a couple times. I think some of that, too, though, comes from the map design. Yeah, um, the, the non-existent map design of Three Houses. Yeah, Three Houses yeah. was fairly cookie cutter uh, for the most part. It was, you know, put units here, put units there, fight over, you know, the battlefield. The few times you really encountered anything that was really dangerous were like the volcano uh, levels or the fire levels. And even those were few and far between. The one credit I will give Three Hopes in that regard is like, Yes, for a lot of the uh, side missions that you have to do leading up to like main chapter missions, most of those levels are indeed uh, like recycled from like pieces of larger levels. But at the same time, um, I thought they did a pretty decent job at uh, creating like bigger, like more locations for like people to be able to fight in. 
as opposed to plus, like what we got in three houses. Plus in three hopes, you're going so fast that you don't really have time to stop and check out the specifics of the scenery. Also true. Whereas in three houses, it's like, oh, look, we're in a town again. It's the same town as before, except this time it's flipped. I think it was, I think so, they, they looked it up. There was like maybe like 10 or so unique maps or like 17, whereas every other game had like 40. I do remember seeing that. Yeah. Like the map, the map variety was hilariously low for a Fire Emblem game. Even Awakening had more fairy maps. <laughs> well, and Awakening had some pretty killer DLC as well. So I never played that DLC. I never got past it. <laughs> it was really hard. Three the 3DS online was too confusing to me. <laughs> That's totally fair. And college was throwing me off. No, I want to play Awakening again. Dang it. When are they going to port it? Uh, I'm waiting for the... I'm genuinely waiting for the announcement of a a re... Um, a reboot of Awakening, which a part of me is kind of dreading, to be honest, because if they change certain things about it, I think it'll actually kind of ruin the experience. But I, I gotta hope that they would... I gotta have three hopes that they would do it justice. I think the only thing that they would uh, the only thing that would make it worse would be uh, adding a gacha like like heroes or engage or shoehorning in amiibo support and older characters or newer characters like Edelgard and like all that. Yeah. Like kind of how they like kind of how they did in Awakening it beforehand with uh, the Outroam stuff. Yeah. Oh, like but if, oh, you're saying like if they added more. Uh more dlc maps for like more characters that appear in the future or like literally they shoehorn in like i'm crown i'm walking around what's that is that edelgarn von dressfeld from fire emblem three houses what are you doing here kind of thing yeah that's legit i i do think fire emblem needs to kind of start letting some of its older characters go like we we've had several games at this point that have brought back characters from you know how old is Awakening at this point? 15? 11. Uh, 11? 13. 13? Oh, no, 11. You're right. Yeah, you're okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, old enough that, like, it's okay. You can you can let these characters go. They will continue to get new versions of themselves in uh, Heroes, in FE Heroes. We don't need them in a flagship title again. Um, I love these characters to death. I'm also totally fine with moving on to new characters. Yeah. Like, I loved Lynn, and then they added her to Heroes. I do not love Lynn anymore. I don't want yeah, that. That's kind of how I feel about characters. a lot of the older characters. Granted, but, once they inevitably add Blazing Blade to uh, GBA Online, then maybe I'll uh, re-find some love for those guys. Who knows? I'll definitely use Lynn in that, because she's got the best great animations in the entire game true rivaled only by sword masters oh that you know what that's another thing that uh i'll i'll give engage over uh three houses the crit animations there Are weren't so any. satisfying i mean there weren't any in uh three house the only good one was the trickster class because your crit animation was you slam duncan <laughs> and then basic tri attack was trickster a class gun. Yeah, yeah, finger, finger gun. guns. I love giving it to Marianne. Marianne oh gosh, the finger gun was so good. <laughs> that feels very strange. It was so dumb, but Trickster was such a broken class. Yeah, that's valid. Easily though, easily the uh, deal, the four DLC classes were the best classes in all of uh, 3H. I think. Uh, besides Enlightened One, yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, the problem is, again, Byleth, Shez, any of the main characters are always going to have access to the best class in the game. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Because they're the main character. So I'm not I'm complaining still... either. Like, they get really pretty outfits, and I'm like, I want to cosplay the heck out of that. The Lord, oh the Lords Sophist... do get all the good shit, though. Sophist Regalia Byleth. 
Yeah, I've actually looked yeah. into how difficult it would be to make that. And a part of me died a little bit inside when I really started studying it. Because I've done I've... Robin, so, you know, I've got, and bulk for that matter, but. I wish I had the body shape to do female Byleth. But my body shape is Aloise. It's sort of my really bad puns, so I guess I could cosplay as Aloise if I felt like it. <laughs> Live your truth, man. Everybody should cosplay everything. Or I'll cosplay as a uh, Diamant. That's another option. I do kind of want to cosplay as Alchrist. <laughs> oh, that would be good. <laughs> oh, he was so funny. <laughs> Poor little Alchrist. <laughs> It's like you live your anxious truth, buddy. I feel you. <laughs> Engage Garrick Mach when. Don't give them ideas. You do realize they're gonna, they could do that crossover. I mean, oh, considering no. that all those characters in that game are 17. Yeah. Just throw them in school. I'm sure there's got to be an AU out there somewhere that does that, but it'd be nice to have that as like an official, I don't know, <laughs> backups DLC to Three Houses. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. That, that would be <laughs> an eyebrow razor. Putting Rose, having Rosado and Yuri team up in the same game. Yes, I would watch the heck out of that or play the heck out of that. Having Dorothea and bitch, put Kagetsu in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be delightful. Oh, my God. And my, um, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm blanking his name. Uh, the dagger user in Engage, not. Uh, oh, Zelkov? Uh, Zelkov. Zelkov. Zelkov is one of my Zel favorite characters. I just want him to be in school. <laughs> Zelkov and who, you, Hubert would be so funny. <laughs> It I would, don't know, wouldn't it? I don't know anything about Zelkov's character, but I know he's not like the assassin assassin. He's just has a really weird way of speaking. So him and Hubert talking would be hilarious. Zelkov, I, I recommend learning more about him because he's he's actually kind of adorable and I love him so much. He was actually the first one that I romanced <laughs> to start with because I was like, I need to know what your deal is. But he, Zelkov like, is basically the second coming of Niles, just more wholesome. Oh, no, 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 no. I completely disagree. Niles really annoyed me. <laughs> Zelkov at least doesn't hit on everything that has two legs. Why is Engage's entire cast just a bunch of dorks? Because they're delightful, and sometimes what you need in life is dorks. <laughs> I mean, the, Fo the Fodland duology, the characters are all dorks, too, and just no. in different ways. No. no. Felix is not a dork. He's a douche. Okay, that's the exception, not the rule. There's a lot of fangirls and fanboys and fan non-binary people who I think would disagree with you. I I cannot stand Felix as a character. <laughs> I'm hearing that. <laughs> him, well, the, him this trans do... Never mind. Go, go, go ahead. I was no, gonna like, say make, that. make your point first. I was going to say, those, those characters are the reason why I hate Azure Moon, Azure Gleam, Dimitri's route. I... Dimitri too, I can't. Well, hearing that, it transitions into uh, the next part of the thing, next part of the show. So before the start of the episode, we picked a house to defend to the death in a debate. Chris picked the Black Eagles, Kat picked the Golden Deer, and a guest who was going to be on this episode but had to drop picked Blue Lions, so I will take up that mantle in their stead. So why do you think your house is the best house? Dorothea. Wait is a that... minute, that doesn't count. Dorothea could be in any of the houses. It's true. Uh, Dorothea. <laughs> My God. I'm hearing uh, a pattern. <laughs> okay, okay. Real answer, Bernadetta leaves her room. Time skip. She leave, like she leaves her room like twice pre time skip. Yes, but post time skip, it does not matter which route unless it's Edelgard. She will never leave her room. She leaves her room, I think, once on uh, once or twice. I think on Azure Moon. No, never. Oh, really? She never does. Huh. Well then, because I've, I've recruited her in every single route. Her, her Bernadetta and Dorothea, I recruit on both routes because I just refuse to like ever have the option of uh, pointing a sword at them. 
You know what? That's fair. I respect that. But uh, real reason why Edelgard was my favorite one. Hmm. It was the first one I chose. So there's re- there's bias with that. I also just liked her attitude. Just the whole she, like no nonsense get shit done vibe. She had conviction. And then when you find out that she's just a major dork because she calls themselves the Black Eagle Strike Force. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. And she's and she's a painter and really bad at it. It's like she's just oh, and her backstory. Once I found out about her backstory and how like twisted and like awful it was. I was like, oh, you need a hug. <laughs> Which is because for uh, people who haven't played, uh, I don't know if I should spoil it. Do it. So the time skip, it's different for uh, for Edelgard's route. Because the part that the time skip happens, you sit on the thing, and then Rhea's like, arrest Edelgard. And you're like, whoa, slow your roll, sister. What's going on here? And then you're given an ultimatum. Choose a side. Me thinking like... Wait, I like Edelgard. Let's hear her out. I chose to side with her, and it immediately cuts to war. And you're just like, excuse me? Why Why is this the, one, the choice that determines everything? That was the most nonsensical part about the entire route. <laughs> I don't even remember what original point I would make. I just remember how absurd that was. It's like, I wanted to hear her out. She had, like... Let her, let her speak her mind before we just try to straight up murder her. Plus, I liked uh, Apex of the World. Once I first heard that as the final boss theme, I was like, this is... This is bliss. I bit Nirvana. <clears throat> yeah, it is a really good song. Although I will, I will also put... Uh... Hmm. I don't know if I'd put God Shattering Star as like better than it. They're they're both good. They're two sides of the same coin. If you like one, you like the other. I mean, I do also have a soft spot too. I will admit for a, a funeral for flowers, which is the uh, Silver Snow final boss theme. I haven't done that route, but I've listened to it on occasion. It's really good. Yeah, I'm really impressed. You know the names of all these songs. Oh, the Fire Emblem Three Houses soundtrack is my favorite soundtrack in all of Fire Emblem. That's legit. <laughs> In fact, I'm currently listening to Scales of the Goddess right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to the Shackled Wolves the whole time. It, it's it's the time skip, the, the time skip chapel theme. And it, once you get to the time skip, that song starts playing. It's like, this is serene. Hmm. Oh, okay. It's so good. Like the Three Houses music is so good. Chasing Daybreak, when it, that starts playing post time skip, and you know things are legit. Roar of Dominion. Oh. Between Heaven and Earth. It's, oh my god oh, blue skies and blue skies in a battle oh and my one of my favorite post time skip battle theme the long road oh my god once the long road starts playing oh <laughs> granted i will I, admit three houses soundtrack is really good i'm not even gonna deny that but i personally would put engage and fates above it no i can't Anything fates related, I can't. <laughs> okay, fates, spe- fates, specifically, okay. specifically the songs that play in Fate's Birthright. No, that's a, <laughs> that's a straight up no. No, 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 no. <laughs> conquest, conquest, a dusk fall or whatever it's called. Such a good song. I mean, you you don't even hear dusk falls in any of the roots. You hear it like before you start. No, there. I forget what it's called. But it's the it's the theme that plays when you fight Hinoka and Takumi. Oh, uh, a great fall, I think. I'd have I'd have to go look it up. That, that I I will say I think the lay motif for Fates is better than Three Houses, but barely. Yeah, I still I'll think take that. Sound, and then engage. 
nothing nothing sticks out like the only two songs that stick out for me for engage are the final boss theme which i don't think is as good as three houses and uh the psalm battle theme but that's just because it's like it's like gerudo valley in uh, ocarina of time it's unique mm. and different enough that it's memorable by default i think my also, favorite songs in the same, uh... same kind of instrumentation in the and like uh style so yeah, I think my favorite songs in uh, Engage would be like Unshaken Royal Confidence, uh, Bright Sandstorm, which is the psalm theme. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's the song that plays in the, uh, pro- it's the two songs that play in the prologue chapters on Lethos. And I then, uh, <clears throat> and then what's the other one? Oh, uh, Trial of Radiance. I don't cons- see the trial themes are remixes, so I don't count those. I do, but then there's also uh, the four wolves themes. That one's really good because it's just oh some, yeah, some the four- guy gurgling like rawr, rawr, rawr. yeah, like the four hounds frenzy when like it you just fu- you start fighting them and the dubstep starts popping up in the background. That shit is so good. <laughs> see, three houses had dubstep too. Yeah, three houses had dubstep too, but. It Literal basically just dubstep. it basically just added in like what like wub 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 in the background over a theme that already existed. So good. I wasn't into it. Uh CJ, uh yeah. defend your house. <laughs> yeah. Okay, defend defend, def- defend the blue defend, lines. Defend those blue Well, you can defend uh, uh the wolves ashen wolves if you want to because i know yep. that was your I original did, choice i did pick the ashen wolves before and yeah, that's fine <laughs> the wolves i feel like i've talked them up enough in this in this <laughs> entire episode fair enough the blue lines i started with when i first played so they hold so like similar to a uh, chris with the black eagles they hold a soft spot in my heart as well but i will admit that um it is very much held back by um by Felix, by uh, the conditions you need to hit in order to, for uh, Dudu to rejoin you. Uh, that wasn't uh, that bad, though. Held back by Gilbert. Held back by, <laughs> held back by Ingrid, of all fucking characters. Yeah. And like, Ingrid pisses me off, and that's even despite the fact that I s supported her at least once. The only reason I say that is because um. And I'm trying to figure out a decent way to put this. Like, in every single other route, her character takes a nosedive and she's all about, like, just eating and getting, and getting like, enough gains for her training. And then when, when it comes to, like, all of her supports and her entire characterization when you're in Blue Lions, the whole thing just delves into racism. Until by the time you hit Dudu's B support with her, and she realizes like, oh shit, racism bad. And I'm like, dude, come on. She had a a clarifying moment at that part. I feel like that's just that whole. I don't remember Dudu's like people's name, but that whole subplot just brings the whole of Blue Lions down for me. Yeah, the the uh, Dusker people. Yeah, and yeah. that's the, that's the other thing too. Like one of my biggest beefs with Three Houses is like you have an entire thing filled an entire world filled with like all these different island island nations that are part of Fodland but just like still surrounded and the only one you ever actually go to is Bridget on a map that you've played before. Which is bullshit, honestly, but okay, anyway, I'm off of that. And why couldn't we have gone to like any of these other places like uh Srang, Morphin, uh Dagda, Albania? Like, I don't know. And you have a story that's like rife with all sorts of political intrigue and all that nonsense and whatever bullshit is associated with it. And like it could the whole of it could have been better and a lot of it could have transferred over to the time skip but uh a lot of it just fell off immediately and took a nosedive when Edelgard just goes like oh i'm declaring war and everyone's just what yeah there's like 
there's all sorts of like attempts at world building that needed to be done in uh both Fodlin games that just really didn't happen. I feel like the world building issue stems from the fact that they split it up over four separate routes instead of yeah yeah I'm with you. <laughs> I feel like what they should have done is uh they should have done it kind of how Fates did it where you get like the ability to use or wait didn't uh didn't Three Hopes do that where you use like a map with each of the different uh classes? What do Am you I mean? wrong? I remember. Like, I remember like you, seeing maps in those games where like you have you had to use certain units like you could only use like magic users or you could only no, no, use not, guys not or only girls. I thought about in the beginning of the game like was there was it did you choose immediately? Choose. Um, oh, oh choose you your, choose where you were going. Yeah, you yeah. choose it within the first I think two uh cuz you go through the tutorial with the three um house yeah. leaders then you meet the other characters which is how you get introduced to the different uh houses and then the second you get to garrick mock after talking with um who's the jokester again Aloise. yeah uh after you talk with Aloise, he's like you should come back to the academy and if you go no he goes too bad you're coming back to the academy anyway because we wouldn't have a game otherwise uh and then you Just go back to the academy and you have to make the choice right then and there um basically off of just meeting the different characters yeah. you don't really and the know funny thing is the you don't even meet bernadetta yeah that's right oh that's right because she's not there yeah uh, she she just doesn't show up yeah which i mean it's true to form but yeah, um perfect, perfectly in character you do at least get you know the little character introduction from the house leaders which is you know more than they had to do and i'm glad that they did but but uh circling back they should have done like how face did it for three houses where you don't choose a house you get all three but like a couple levels you play with one house a couple house a couple chapters you play with another house you're allowed to bring in a couple other students as guest characters so if you find one that you like you can bring them with so you can baby them more and then you get up to a time skip and then you choose which house you want to do Uh, you know what that would have been better that uh, way you can have the, the world building be universal and then split into three for the time skip instead of having the time skip. Or you, then you could save it at that point and then just make three separate uh, playthroughs of the same uh, the, of the different routes without having to replay the game three separate times. I think the issue I have with going that route would be you miss out on a lot of the specific characterization of that house. Um, that, true. that you would have that you have for that entire component pre time skip and if you did go the route of you know you get to kind of get a feel for everybody and everything for that first part of the game the second part of the game would have to be so long to make up for that lost characterization that i would worry it would be either rushed or it wouldn't be as robust um i get what you're i think i get where you're coming from uh in terms of um like it, it might feel more like your choice matters because when you choose the house very early on, you have no idea what that actually means in terms of the time skip, in terms of those characters, in terms of the world changing. Um, You're kind of just like, yeah, I'm a student or I'm a professor now. Sorry, wrong game. (laughs) I'm I'm a professor (laughs) now and I'm going to teach this house. And I have, you know, these kids are kind of looking up to me, even though I'm like a year older than they are um or younger or younger yeah if you're mercedes that's a good point um but i think had they gone the route that they had they gone a different way than they did because fates ran into a lot of problems with its storyline not just it was just it was badly written in the first place but with the way that it was split it was so one-sided if that makes sense whereas with i do think with three houses even though you are kind of with your one house and yes you're getting most things from that point of view you are still able to intermingle with other characters yeah. from other houses um which could be lost if they went a different route that's fair yeah. i'll give you that just give them unlimited uh development time so they don't rush it yeah. and they can create this ultimate game yeah 100 percent 
I'll take two. Agreed. Systems, but, contact us. The three of us are open. We're ready. But only if they release a physical CD of the entire soundtrack. <laughs> and then do not lock the DLC songs off in the abyss. Look oh, is that you. what they did? For... Look at you, Fates. Oh, yeah. I oh, YouTube, yeah. yeah. Really there, even, there, to it. there weren't even English, physical English CDs for uh, Fates either. That's true. Most of the Fire Emblem soundtracks, I think, were only released in Japan. Yep. That's that's just uh, Nintendo soundtracks in general. They've released some in yeah. English. Well, now, I mean, if you listen to the theme song from uh, Engage, it's in English. <laughs> well, yeah. And three Houses. Oh, and Three Houses, yeah. yeah. Um, or if you want to get obscure, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which was also <laughs> had its English songs. Uh, and was delightful. Did those even transfer over to the Switch version? I don't think they yeah. did. Oh, they yeah. did? Yeah, they did. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I gotta uh, get that game one of these days. It's. Mm, I bought it at we... launch and I still haven't played it. Okay, I've beaten the whole thing. CJ, if you want to do another podcast. <laughs> I, I was going to say, we, yeah. we'll both play it. Yeah, let's let's do this, y'all. <laughs> I want to have an entire 15-minute debate on the censorship and how that one guy got really <laughs> upset over that one sensor. Uh, there's over like over what? Just a character having like zipper panties? No, no, no. It was the like the pelvis shadows. Mm-hmm. They got he, they got censored out. And he's like, I can't believe they removed her vagina bones like that. Bruh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not not paraphrasing. That no, was what he I said. know you're not. That's, I know you're not. That's the part that hurts. <laughs> I don't. I know you got. I want the audience to know that. I that is yeah, cool, no. not my words. <laughs> Very clearly, yeah. We got to make sure audience mm-hmm. be aware. <laughs> I know some of the things I've been saying earlier have been I raising. Pet, come over. <laughs> oh, um, so to go, I'll, t- I'll take care of your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um to go back to your original question cj defense of a house um so i think i picked uh golden deer um oh. funnily enough golden deer was my first playthrough <laughs> oh well then um See, I, yeah, I there's feel a like there's a... here yeah. <laughs> sorry chris what were you gonna say i was gonna say I think there's, like, i'm pretty sure we all just chose our favorites just out of bias I mean, I'll be honest, like, y'all had kind of chosen your houses, and that was literally what was left, and I was like, okay, that's fine, like, I have no problem defending Golden Deer, um, because Claude is bo- his baby, and Claude is wonderful, um, and just that, that whole group is wonderful, Ignatz and Raphael, um, yeah, I really, really love that house, but um, I think one of the reasons Golden Deer stood out to me is it's kind of the strangest of the four stories because Claude isn't directly connected to any of the other main characters in terms of like, he's just a, an acquaintance slash friend uh, where you have Dimitri and Edelgard who <laughs> like are actively at war with each other and just they have this whole familial dichotomy and these, yeah. these events from before and claude just kind of comes in and goes hey and does the what hair up? flip and you're like yeah i can get behind that that sounds great <laughs> i'm the new um, transfer student how's it going yeah exactly finger guns all the way baby like <laughs> I think one of the reasons I enjoyed his route so much is that that it isn't world shattering. Like it's just kind of the Alliance dealing with the mess that is the world and that are his two other former friends, arguably still friends dealing with their crap, Um, which I really enjoyed and actually was a little bit of an easier introduction to the game than if I had gone one of the more story quote unquote, like the, the main story heavy routes um, I got to just kind of enjoy the game and I got to enjoy the characters that I was surrounded by. Claude was really cute. So that was fine. Um, just, I don't know. I, I really got the opportunity to just have a good time with the game as it was without some of the, like those that slither in the shadows, uh, a lot of what it, like the trauma that Edelgard went through, the trauma that Dimitri went through. Um, there's it, there's still elements of that, but I do think Golden Deer is the easiest path to understand in terms of story, and I think too it's just a kind of a nice introduction to that world. 
That's fair. I love that in his in his route, he is uh the CEO of stopping racism. Yeah, yeah, hundred yep, like, percent. And like it's half of Dubichi's route is about racism, but meanwhile, Claude is the one that solves it all. Claude's like, guys, just listen. I swear, I've got a plan. All you got to do, stop being racist bigots. It's come on, like let's all work together. Let's build a better world. Yes, I'm Elmiron. Yes, you kind of found out about that late in the game. That's fine. Maybe don't care and like let's actually work together so that the world doesn't come to a shattering end. Hey, you want to watch from me Red go Dead beat up Redemption this... too? Is that you? You want to? You guys want to go see me kill this really old guy? <laughs> want to see me do it again? It just just like a drop kick. Yeah. Hey, violence with the steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I don't know, that that route still brings a smile to my face. Also, Dimitri's... Mary Marianne is a treasure that must be protected yes. at all costs. Yeah. Yes, Marianne must always be protected. This is, this is legit. Like um, the dark, the darkest thing I found with her, like I didn't even know this because I recruited her every single time. But apparently if you don't recruit her and you're not playing Golden Deer, she just outright doesn't show up in the time skip. Yeah, I think she she goes into uh, to like live with her father, who's not a good guy, from what I remember. I could I could have sworn it was implied that she kills herself. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yeah, I do remember that because if you go into her room, uh, you don't necessarily see a rope, but you see two chairs positioned in a way. Jeez, where like, I don't think that's push. I, it's mostly her dialogue post time skip where she's like. I was lost, but then I found the goddess, and now the goddess is you. So I have a purpose in life now. I Which mean, she found concerning. she found the goddess in pre time skip. Well, but, but she... like with you dead, and you, uh, if you don't recruit her, it's assumed that she's just you're she's dead, lost. Violence, dead. Yeah, like she's like I have nothing else to live for. Yeah. Oof. Whereas if like you recruit her, she still has that support group by proxy of being re- of, of of you so it's like no we know teach is still alive so don't do whatever you were gonna do listen i got animal crossing let's play it let's play <laughs> we survived a pandemic Actually, everybody yeah, come yeah, on that's, you know what she didn't kill herself playing animal crossing new head cannon <laughs> yep i like that head cannon far more <laughs> she's still waiting for the dlc I will say, in, in terms of Golden Sun, or Golden Sun, goodness gracious, Golden oh, Deer, no. wrong game, wrong game, back up. Um, Lawrence drove me up the wall. Uh, I really, yeah. really did not like Lawrence or uh, Hubert, for that matter. I I really didn't like either one of them. Um, until I got to Three Hopes. And then I went, Lawrence is actually a halfway interesting character in this game, whereas he's so one note in Three Houses. Yeah. He at least gets some characterization where he's like, oh, you're not just a jerk. You actually can work with other people when you're not being a spoiled little asshat. Like, yeah. great. Mm. Lawrence in my Golden Deer run in Three Houses is still level one. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure I left yeah. him there too. <laughs> yeah, I, ne- I never used him. Yeah, like I I've, did in Three Hopes, though. Yeah, I'm not using him point blank, period. Meanwhile, like, I had... Shit, I had, like, three spots on the team because I dropped Lawrence, and I filled that void with uh, Happy, Balthus, and Yuri. Happy, Happy is just on every single team. Yes, always. Protect Happy. <laughs> Protect her at all costs. It always surprises me to hear how much other people really like Happy. I have nothing against her. Uh, I think she's interesting. But I I didn't realize how many people really like her. She's got such a fun personality because her personality is I don't give a shit. (laughs) But she's still, it's not like I don't care about what you think. It's like, that's cool. Things happen. I don't give whatever. Yeah. She's fairly well adjusted given her life. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like my life my life's been absolute dog shit for about 20 years. Whatever, man. What else you can wanna... you throw at me? Oh, you're going to make me sigh? Is that what you want? Okay. <laughs> I'll sigh. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> and then all, love... all of a sudden a giant bird shows up and abducts yeah. Balthus. <laughs> And she and that's when you she sighs again because she's like, of course it would go after Balthus, and then let's just rinse repeat. It's a rough life, man. 
I love uh, the forging bonds with the the Ashton wolves, where Bowie was freaking out the whole time about her. Yep. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna sew a demon, are you? And she's like, uh, maybe. <laughs> And then, and then, like her whole support in in heroes ends. Like she's just sighing the whole time. Like the it's like that one meme of like Bowie and Happy. Like let's summon a demon. It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like Alphonse and Gatekeeper. Who keeps summoning them? That's uh, I love Gatekeeper. Yeah, Gatekeeper's pretty <clears throat> great. I mean, there's a reason that Gate. Like I don't think correct me if i'm wrong uh game developers i don't think they intended gatekeeper to be fallen in love with as much as he has been no not at all not at the all. internet has gone nuts and gone no you will not touch my baby i will protect him yeah he now he's protected. playable in three hopes yeah which blew my mind when i found out that he was a secret character to play and i was like of course of course no he is way. Uh, it's the one thing I hate about Three Hopes is that there's no adventure mode. Yeah, yeah. I, I was opportunity. Yeah, it's it kind of stinks because like our, I've got Arval at this point. Spoiler alert: you can get Arval. Um, so and this. I can't. You can't really use him because by the time you get him, I'm, I'm like I've beaten all f- all of the routes at this <clears> point. <throat> I don't know what else to do. Like the yeah. only reason I keep replaying the game is to get the romance routes, and that's. I'm replaying the same game content over and over outside of the one choice that you can make in each of the routes. I'll, uh, I'll give Fire Emblem Warriors credit. The adventure mode was fun. Yeah, 100%. I wanted that, but with the Three Hopes characters. I wanted a mission where you're just running around as like a bunch of girls and you're fighting off Sylvain, Lawrence, and all the other freaking womanizers. That would have been a fun adventure map. And then the final boss is Dorothea because she's like the ringmaster behind it all. I'm hearing a pattern about Dorothea. <laughs> I'm, a simp. I'm a hardcore simp for her. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, every single Fire Emblem game, I have the character. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I've definitely got mine. Except for the Talius games. Really? There's just <clears throat> there's just no one I like. Okay. Besides maybe Joffrey, but he is playable for maybe 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's, that's true. Because I, I, I have one even from those games, but I wait. I do too. And it's Hellius, far. I, I mean Mia and Zyre kind and of. Okay, maybe but, I'm thinking of the wrong game. Talius is with Ike, right? Yep. Yeah, Ike and, yeah. And so, th- okay, never mind. I am thinking of the right games. Like, there's just none of the characters really jive with me in those games. You okay. know, every other game, there's just the character. See, Volk was that for me for Talius because I was Volk like, is I a just, good pick. I just want to be Volk. <laughs> I just want to run around in that awesome outfit. I can tell I, you from life experience that outfit feels amazing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, his voice in Fire Emblem Heroes makes me want to use him. Like, you want to look for the fireman, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing that irked me about that is like, you're a killer. How did you get that name, the fireman? Well, when you see smoke. Like, what, <laughs> like, what, like, what did you do? Take a fireman's axe and like bludgeon somebody to death with it? No, I think he was on a fireman's calendar. I can see, you know what? You know what? I right? can see that. Right? Like, there's a number of characters. <laughs> like The Ike, entirety of the Tellius guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, between Soth, Ike, Volk, Oscar, like... Boyd. Boyd, yeah. What, Just the, 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 the brothers? The, all three the, of the brothers? I don't know about Rolf. Oh, wait, Rolf's a kid. Never mind. Ignore yeah, everything I, I just yeah. said. I do the not want that on like record. I said, like I said, the two brothers. Bitly Sorry, fair. yeah, I forgot Rolf is a child. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> it's hard because Very of those good. games. It's they use like the adult models for him, so it's like he's supposed to be like ten, but his his uh, in-game model he's like twenty-five. <laughs> there's a lot of weird stuff in those games. Um, it's even some of the stuff with Mist, and I'm like, oh, you're also like ten. The, what is it with Fire Emblem games? Like, 
underage. There's there's two <laughs> constants for Fire Emblem. One, one of your units has to look like a 10-year-old or be a 10-year-old. Uh-huh. And two, uh, incestuous romance has yeah. to be a thing somehow. I am like 99% sure we hit on this when we play when we talked about awakening as well. Although we that I, I think yeah. that's because we started arguing about fates. Because <laughs> fates. Um did you yeah. do a fates episode yet? No, we haven't. No. We're doing that. We're doing that soon. <laughs> I'm in. I have to rewatch everything about fates because yeah. I think I'm go play it again. Memory. Yeah. I really only remember now parts of what's in Engage with uh camilla and uh corin which is not a great representation of fates <laughs> it really isn't but fuck it here we are i mean camilla was the best well, i shouldn't say the best thing she was the best thing that came out of fire emblem warriors yeah sure. oh she's in fire emblem warriors i forgot yeah she's the best she, unit in the game she, she broke the game in yeah. like 18 pieces it's, yeah and i found that out as soon as i got her Oh yeah, I used her constantly oh for any of the missions where they're like, "You have five minutes to kill as many units as you want." I went, "Okay, ground pound time." I oh my this. god, I think <laughs> I think it was like the S rank for that was like maybe two thousand units. I was at six. <laughs> like, what is this? Right, you're Nuts. at a point where you're like, "I think I've just murdered entire countries of people in less than five minutes with one character on a dragon." Um, every single like Warriors this. game has that one character. Yeah. Like my favorite I, example of that is uh, Dynasty Warriors Eight. There's a character on the uh, Red Faction named Long Guy, I think, and his personal <laughs> we- his personal weapon is like a gauntlet that he wears over his arm that looks like a tiny boat. That's amazing. What? And. <laughs> And his special attacks, like not not the uh, nuke attack that you see in all of these Warriors games, but you know how if you're playing like Fire Emblem, let's go with uh, Three Hopes as the example here. If like hitting the Y button a bunch of times and then X at a certain spot gives a certain ending move, right? Yeah, the finisher. All of this guy's and en- like finishing moves summon tidal waves. Oh, That's... so it's kind of like uh, what's her name from uh, Hyrule Warriors, the Cube Girl. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Oh wait, it's, no, you're it, talking uh, Lena. Lena. Lena, yeah, the one that some. Yeah. What do you mean narrows it down? There's only one character. Oh, Lana, can... yeah. Oh, is it Lana? Sorry. No, you're good. Narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> it I know down what I said. One. Narrows it down from one to one. <laughs> I I still know what I said. <laughs> Wasn't even the best character in that game. The, anyway, yeah, like there, there's always like that one character in like every Warriors title. See, but it's different for Camilla because it's not like she has one. Well, I mean, she does have one move that's OP, but it's like it's a combination of the fact that you can body slam. The defense on the enemy sucks even on the hardest difficulties, and you can immediately dash out of it. You cancel all end lag. Oh, dang. You yeah, you can body slam, dash, and body slam. Yep. And you can literally two-shot entire fortresses. Yeah. I might have to give Warriors another college try. Yeah, legit, just use Camilla. <laughs> yeah. The only downside right. is when you can't, because there are points in the game where it forces yeah. you to use other characters. You know what? That's fair. And then I forced it anyway. Because <laughs> there's all, like, Lynn's also disgustingly broken. Yeah. Lucina, if you uh, get her far enough. Oh, and this isn't even with, like, their branches fully maxed out. This is base Camilla. Yeah, base, you don't need her, like, maxed out weapon or her god tier weapon. Just her on a dragon body slamming bad guys is just beautiful. So and then who, think, who would you guys you say might... that character is for uh, Three Hopes? Just Shez. like the most broken. Shez. Shez? Yeah. Shez yeah. has you like did... no, no end lag at all. You did. That is true. You did also mention Edelgard before. Edelgard, see, she's not broken. She's just funny. <laughs> she is slightly broken if you give her the movement speed because she's a she's in a tank class and she hits really hard. But Shez, 
can also hit really hard, also hit the entire slate, the entire field at once, bring everybody together in a vacuum and then just one shot them and then shadow dash onto the next thing in 30 seconds. Yeah, it, honestly, it was so rare that I used another character outside of Shez just because at some point I was like, it doesn't even matter if these characters have resistance to swords. He's just so, or, you know, they, she are, are so overpowered that you don't really need other characters. Also, the AI in that game is not great. It's better than it was in Warriors, but not oh by a whole lot. Mm-hmm. They don't. They um, don't die, at least. Yeah, I will give them that. They at least can, you know, are smart enough to heal themselves and the like when they're really getting into trouble. But regularly, I would have to go and do the mission myself. But I, I give the great the game some credit. Speaking of gameplay, um, you know, there's like sub missions that you have to do. You have to open a gate, or you have to uh, turn off a machine, and. I don't remember if this is in Warriors because I don't remember it being there, but at least in no. three, Ho- uh, three Hopes, you can send other units to do that. So if you're dealing with like the massive over uh, over attack of the enemy, you can just be like, hey, one of you who's on horseback, who's actually a decently fast character, go up to that corner and turn off the thing so that I can focus on the map not collapsing. Yeah, Warriors didn't have that, granted. Okay. Granted, Camilla just cleaned out the entire map before he even got the second mission. That's a valid point. That is a valid point. And there wasn't any like variety in the missions. He said, like, take over this point, take over this point, kill as many people as possible, don't die. Yep. Cool. So the last question I have is, <clears throat> if Fodlin were to be revisited with a newer game, like, what would you want? <laughs> what would you want to see? I thought you almost said if Fodlin was real, <laughs> what, what would you do? <laughs> Cry. Okay, if, if both of them was real, what would you do? Kill every last one of them. Oh, I'd no. ask Dorothy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 finish that sentence. Finish that I'd sentence. Finish that sentence. I'd ask Shamir out. <laughs> I'd be like, Mia more. <laughs> Your love is like a hurricane. I mean, let's be honest, it's the same voice actress regardless. Oh, is it the same voice actress between the two yeah. of them? Yeah, oh, Dorothy okay. and Shamir share Allegra Clark as their voice actress. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, that's cool. That's, um, also, that's also like... That was actually why I stuck to Shamir, too, because I played a Labyrinth of Refrain, and Allegra Clark was one of the leads in that one. I was like, I like her voice. She's cool. I like Shamir. She's cool. <laughs> um, I think... Okay, so if we revisited Fodlan... Um, I never expected to revisit Fodlin with Three Hopes. Uh, that was a very nice surprise. Um, and I honestly think if they tried to make a sequel in Three Houses because of the nature of the branching paths, it would actually kind of ruin the experience for me. Um, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where is there is there a true path or like the, you know, the canon path? Um I think the way that Three Houses ends is it allows everyone to kind of choose the canon path that they believe is the canon path. If you make a sequel and, uh, well, assuming it's a sequel, right, that happens in the future, you kind of take that away from players unless it's a continuation of every single one of those storylines and you just choose the storyline from the beginning to see, you know, what it's like, I don't know, a hundred years in the future. Um, I think a prequel would be interesting. Uh, like if we got to see Dedu's homeland um, and some of the other islands before they were taken over by the Empire. Uh, Bridget, like seeing Bridget before the Empire has control over it. But again, like it would have to be, it would just be in the same place. It couldn't be with the same characters, which is fine. Like I actually would kind of not want it to be, but that's my two cents. I'll be honest, prequel would have been my choice because I'd been saying for a while that um, if like even before uh, Three Hopes was announced, I kept saying, and I think Chris can attest to this, that the law, the rule of twos does state that like if something gets a generalist uh, like warrior style spinoff, then it's going to get a very hyper focused one coming up later. That got proven true with uh, Hyra Warriors leading into um, like Hyra Warriors Age of Calamities. So I I remember after that came out, I was like, what if they did that for Fire Emblem too? And the thing that I really wanted to see the most was 
a prequel style of game that had the Warriors gameplay style, but was set fairly far back in the past, but still to the point where like Geralt was both playable and the main character. I think that could have been cool. That's what I want. That's what I oh, interesting. Say. Granted, I was the play break set- backstory. I have settled for the fact that we got Geralt playable in Three Hopes, and I'm cool with that. But if there was going to be something as far as like a prequel is concerned, then I'd like to, I definitely like to see more on like more from Geralt as like a main protagonist style of character. Cause I think that would be interesting just to see young Geralt and uh, how he interacted with uh, Rhea in the older Garrig Mach, how he uh, met Citri and fell in love with her. Like yada 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 stuff of that nature. I I'd also want to see uh young Byleth. Mm. How did she get the Ashen Demon nickname? Yeah, because they completely gloss over that. I mean, the only person who brings it up is uh Shez and Hanuman. Those are the and only the, two people that do. And one other thing that never gets brought up is like why does a uh, Solon continue to refer to Byleth as the fell star? Yeah, there's a lot that doesn't fully get explored with the those who slither in the dark. Their storyline really feels open ended at the end of uh, both Edelgard's path and Dimitri's. From what I remember, because I think they're involved in both mm-hmm. um, yeah. more heavily in Edelgard's, of course. Um, it might be kind of cool to play as them, uh, but you would be the villain, and I don't know how well you could make that sympathetic, um, given everything that we know that they've done to Lysithia, to uh, Edelgard, and to others. Um, but who knows? I mean, it might be kind of interesting to see things from the villain side, as long as maybe they backed off a little bit on some of the terrible things they've done. Or they just throw in a character that's like not fully invested in the motives, but is just there mm-hmm. because they're forced to be. Sure. And then you can break off. Kind of like kind of like how Shez was, was like, oh yeah, you've got those who stood in the dark inside you now. Good luck with that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, maybe someone who ends up like joining up with like a young Byleth or something, uh, and like, I don't know, it's yet another AU in terms of Maybe Edelgard doesn't end up getting hurt in the way that she did, or Lysithia. Or that's um, how that's the catalyst to waking Sothis up. Yeah, that could be it too. So that maybe Byleth awakens Solith, or this whoa, Sol, jeez. So, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Solith. Solith has uh, evolved. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, if, <laughs> if Byleth awakens the goddess way earlier, you know, in their youth. That's a very different story than what happens in Three Houses. Um, so yeah, I I would be fine with a prequel. I just would be worried if they tried to do a sequel. Yeah, like I do. The biggest worry regarding a prequel is, um, I don't know, like because you have Binding Blade that came out first, and then you have Blazing Blade, which is the prequel to Binding Blade, where they, where like. Roy and Lelina's parents and like the the parents of like some of the other characters in that game end up on their own adventure and I just look at that and I'm like okay this story is dog shit but it Blazing Blade suffers I think even though like I like it as a game but <clears throat> it suffers from what I have referred to on this podcast before as the association effect which is like it's not necessarily good, but it has to connect. Mm. And the biggest example of that would be like Zelda Triforce Heroes to the overall Zelda franchise, Metroid Prime Federation Force to all of Metroid, Banjo, bleh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts to all of that series. Like you can list multiple examples. It just keeps going. I thought the story for Blazing Blade was good. I didn't even know six was a thing until like five years later. Yeah, like no, nobody really quite figured it out at the time. Just they saw, they saw Roy in uh, melee in two thousand one, and then um, they're like, "Wait, that's Roy! Wait, he's gonna get a game soon, right?" And it turned, it turns out, no, that 
Like we never got that game. And that's even despite the fact that like Sakurai put Roy in melee in order to promote the upcoming release of Binding Blade, which released in Japan when 2002, 2003. That sounds Whatever. about right. Here, I'm going to look it up. Fire Emblem Binding Blade. Ah, March 29th, 2002. I was right. <clears throat> and then Blazing Blade released in like what, 2003? I think so. Uh, yes, April 25th, 2003. Yeah, because Sacred Stones was 2005. I remember that. Well, I miss Sacred Stones. I want to play that game again. Me too. Such but a no, good like, story. But no, like, Amelia. It had, like, a prequel would have to connect the way that Blazing Blade did to Binding Blade. I would understand that. But the way I feel, too, is there's so much riding on the story for that as far as, like, how it connects that I sincerely hope they don't fuck it up. Because they're, like... I never thought Blazing Blade's story was bad until I saw some write-up on the uh, Serenus Forest forums where somebody actively pointed out every single plot hole in that entire game. And I'm like, okay, there's actually 200 of these. Were they actually plot points? Not plot points, plot holes. Or were they actually, I, I mean, same thing. Uh, some, some of them were, some of them weren't, but like, it does, it does raise a lot more questions that never get answered. Well, that's just how it was back in the day where the internet was still in its infancy. So people couldn't like hyperanalyze and post 10 hour YouTube essays on the games. True. Also, Also, fun fact, um, if Roy wasn't added in to promote Binding Blade and Melee, uh, the second Fire Emblem representative was going to be Leaf from Thracia 776. Really? Just because it was the newest game at the time. Now, okay. would so are we in the good or bad timeline? That's up to you to decide. I don't know. I, I, I you know, see, I would say yes because Altana. But then Roy, Ray Chase. True. Well, who knows? <clears throat> um, anyway, that's about all the time we have. Before we close out, do you have anything that you want to plug or shout out before we finish up? Ah, damn, I had something really funny, but I forgot it. <laughs> oh, yeah, follow me on Fodland Connections. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little Facebook group we have where we keep up on the latest happenings at Garrick Mock. Oh wow. What's your yeah. what's your handle on there? No, I'm gatekeeper. One one. Uh, one. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. That tracks. That tracks. I'm not the I'm, I'm not the actual I'm the gatekeeper's cousin. Because you know oh. how like the, the gatekeeper's like, I'm the gatekeeper's brother. I'm, I'm filling in for the gatekeeper. I figured so, you were gonna be like hat keeper or something like that, but uh, wait, so uh, if you're yeah. the cousin, does that mean you're the abyss keeper? No, they're not related. You don't know that. They, <laughs> They, they say they're not related. All right, that's fair. Kat, do you have anything you want to plug or shout out before we finish up? No, just that this was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you guys both for being here. This has been a, a pretty fun discussion. <laughs> Join us next time when we get at each other's throats over uh, which fates route is the worst. Ah! <laughs> My God, that, that podcast is going to be madness. I will I will defend conquest as hard as I can. I'm gonna go study this just so I can tear it apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like an entire half hour spiel of me saying that Sole supports aren't that bad. Yeah, let's uh I will listen to that argument. Honestly, I will too, if only just so <laughs> I can like try to find some kind of hole to poke in it. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm stealing all of my things from other people's thoughts on the subject. Okay, you know what? That's perfectly fair. I respect that.
And that's our show. Thank you everyone so much for listening. Like and subscribe if you wish. Leave a comment below with your thoughts. Share the podcast around if you can. And please stay tuned for the next episode. Have a great rest of your day and take care. Bye.